Hello, my name is Alex, and in this video, I'm going to run you through the setup of Yoast SEO for your WordPress website. I've installed and activated the Yoast SEO plugin here in the plugin section, and so we'll head over to the dashboard and start the setup. Let's start in the general section, and to kick off with, there's a handy wizard to help with the initial install and setup. Here, select the answers that are relevant to your blog or website, and click Next on each screen. You can choose an image here, maybe it's your logo or some sort of avatar, and it's a good idea to load one if you have one. I'm going to skip over this social profile section as we'll enter those in a separate screen a little bit later on. Post visibility for SEO is something to pay attention to. Your list may be different or longer if you have custom post types configured. If you have multiple authors, Yoast can help you avoid duplication by selecting Yes here. Like social media, there's a separate section for the Google Search Console that we'll complete in a moment, so for now, skipping. Likewise, the title. I'm also not interested in the Yoast newsletter, thank you, and we can also skip these adverts and finally close the wizard. Let's move along to the Features section. In this section, we want to enable Advanced, as these will be useful settings in a little while, and also disable the Admin menu bar. Click Save. The next section is Company Info. Complete any missing details. And in Webmaster Tools, we'll hook up to Google Search Console. This is something you'll definitely want to do. When you click, you'll open the Google Webmaster page. Click Alternate Method, then HTML Tag. Copy and paste this part inside the speech marks into the field into the plugin. Click Save and then return to the Google site and click Verify. The next section to configure is Titles and Meta. Let's start with Post Types. We'll leave the standard ones as index, and depending on what custom types you have, you can select no index. In the title, it's recommended to remove the site name and just leave the post title. Do this for each type, and when you're done, click Save, and move to Taxonomies. It's important to remember that taxonomies, such as tags and categories, don't really mean much in search engine results. Their primary role is user-friendly interface for our visitors, as well as post or page organization for the webmaster. As a result, the recommendation here is to set them to no index, and again, click Save when you're done. Archives is next, which we'll leave as default. And lastly for this section, Other, where we'll set the archive subpages to no index. With this, we have configured the titles and meta section, so let's move on to the social part. This is the same details we were asked in the wizard a few minutes ago. Now we can go and enter them. I've just put my Facebook details in here now, but you'll have other social platforms that you can enter. In the Facebook page section, you can set the default image that will be shown on social feeds should someone share your post, and likewise on Twitter for the same. For Twitter, we'll select Summary with Large Image, which is shown to help with engagement and, consequently, more traffic. If you have Pinterest accounts, you can follow the link and paste the integration code here. And likewise, Google+, Plus, you can enter it here. A nice feature of this Yoast plugin is that you can generate an XML sitemap. There's no need for a separate plugin to do this. Uploading this sitemap to Google can help your website or blog become part of Google searches much faster. Select the post types remembering to add your custom ones. I'll leave the exclusions blank, and in taxonomies, I tend to exclude tags, but we'll keep categories in there. So now I'll quickly show you how to submit this to the Google Search Console. Navigate to the website we left open from verifying the Search Console a moment ago. Click on Site Names, and from the menu on the left, choose Crawl, and then Sitemap. Now click Add Sitemap. We'll find the exact address back on our website when we click View. 
grab this end part of the URL, switch back to the Google Console and paste it here. Click Verify and Google will start the process of checking. It can take a few hours for this to be concluded. So now we've completed the sitemap section and the next one to move on to is advanced. There's a very nice feature here called breadcrumbs. We can enable this to display breadcrumbs on search results. This can make a big difference in website traffic, so they're worth considering. When you've enabled, you need to select the taxonomies to show for blog posts. In my case, I'll select categories and click save. Also in the advanced section, we can look at permalinks. We can keep category here as per the default. Let's select redirect for this one and remove reply to com option as well. Click save here for these changes. Lastly for these tabs, there are some RSS feed options, but there's no need to alter them right now. Yoast comes with some nice tools here in the tools section. First is robots.txt. This as a this is an important file for search engine crawlers, and if, like me on this demo site, you don't have a TXT file yet, it'll help you create one, which we can save and return to the Tools menu. Another handy feature is if you have a bit more of an established blog or site, but are introducing Yoast for the first time, is bulk editing. Here you can specify your SEO optimized title, and in the other tab, you can bulk update a description as well. For the site map, we used the Google Search Console. This next section of the Yoast plugin allows you to get feedback of search-related errors from that console direct to your website dashboard. You'll need to click and obtain the authorization code, which you copy and paste into this field. If the console detects any errors, they'll also display here. OK, so that's a good place to stop with the setup of the Yoast plugin. We have configured all the options. But there's another key moving part in this search engine optimizing equation, and that's the posts themselves. Let's take a look at a post and see how the Yoast plugin allows you to further optimize it. I'll open this post, and scrolling down, we see the Yoast section. First, if we click on the post name, we can input an SEO title. Now this is a very important tool. The title returned on the search results can be different to the actual title of the post. The same goes for the metadata. Google would normally grab the first roughly 160 or so characters of your post, but here you can override that and have Google show something more relevant to your potential readers in the search results. If we look at the sharing section, it's possible to define an image to accompany the post. Typically, your post will have three or four images in, but each one on its own might not tell the full story of the content of your article or your page. This image selection allows you to pick something appropriate, plus ensuring that the size is optimized for both Facebook and Twitter. That's it for this video on setting up the Yoast SEO plugin for WordPress. If you found it useful, please click like and leave a comment. Plus we have loads more useful videos on our YouTube channel, so don't forget to subscribe.